Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I was working on our house construction up here, uh, and uh, we heard, there's something happened in the woods. There's some danger uh, in the woods. We heard someone's in need of help, and uh, we're gonna go in and see what's going on here. What'd you find? Frog. You got a frog? Right. What kind of a frog is that? I don't know, but it moves right. so fast. Let's see what we can find out about it. Now there's two different types of frogs. There's this pickerel, pickerel and leopard frogs, and they both look kind of similar. Which one do you think this is? Pickerel. And you can tell the difference because how? Because it's square. Yeah, the spots are more squarish on pickerel frogs and more like ovals on leopard frogs. Okay. It's its head. Yeah, it's looking around. Or it's, or it's, or I'm, I'm Okay. All right. So we're headed into these woods to. Uh, well, it sounds like someone needs some help, and we're gonna, uh, you know, go in and see if we can give them a hand. Uh, you know, find out what's going on. Uh, before uh, we get to that, though, I wanted to mention that tonight we're gonna give a second try at the live stream. If you guys recall, uh, we tried a live stream recently, and it just didn't work. I don't know what the deal was. YouTube is always a little bit glitchy with live streams. That's why we do that 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever of comedy bits at the beginning of each live stream just so I have some buffer time uh, and I tried for 40 minutes last time to get the live stream going and it never happened. We're going to try again tonight uh, you know so you can uh, tune in at 8:30 Eastern Standard Time see if you can catch us. We got a lot of new stuff going on at the build site and we'll share that with you uh, but for right now we're going into the woods and we're going to see what's going on what this emergency is. River you on the trail? Uh, this is a pretty well established trail through here. You can kind of see the uh, where it's worn through the middle here. This trail heads down to a stream area that we tend to hang out at. One of the nice uh, features of the land around the property that we're building on is it has a lot of this, this rock outcropping material here. It's just really, really beautiful. It's one, uh, uh, it's kind of a landscape feature that's very common in New England is to have large uh, outcroppings of granite. Uh, that's one of the reasons we have radon here is there's so much granite. Uh, another feature in New England you see a lot of is stone walls. Here's an old stone wall and we're going to be passing right through that. The trail just kind of goes around here. It sounded like the emergency is kind of in this direction. River, do you hear anything? Trying to find out what's going on here. You can very clearly see the trail that we blazed through here. This area here used to be just all bushes. And for the past couple years, we've uh, been trimming them down using a, a weed trimmer to, to make a path here. Because as you can see, without it being trimmed, it's like over River's head. What did you see, River? Frog. Uh, he, here's uh, one thing that we've, we've got a decent amount of here on the property. It's dead at the moment, but uh, these are blackberries. One interesting thing about blackberries uh, or raspberries is that anything that looks uh, reasonably like a blackberry or a raspberry uh, may not be a blackberry or raspberry. There's all different types of variants, but there's nothing that looks like them that lives in North America that's toxic. So if you're interested in getting into wild edible plants and you find something that looks reasonably like a blackberry or a raspberry with you know similar leaves and everything, you know, you can bet that that thing is not, you can bet your life that that thing is, at the very least, isn't going to kill you. It may not be a blackberry, may not be a raspberry, but it's not going to kill you. This is the area that we hang out in a lot. This is the pool area. We've been working on this, uh, making some nice rock retaining walls here. Uh, that's a little uh, burn pit. Uh, the, uh, a great way to keep bugs down. Uh, if you've got biting flies or something like that, is just have a little smoky fire going whenever you're hanging out. And, uh, during the summer, when there were a lot of bugs, we would uh, we would utilize that a lot. This is a really nice open area, and this is one of the other great features of this property is easy access to water. There's just water uh, that flows through all the lower areas. It's not up by the house, which makes the house you know safe from flooding, but it uh, we have a lot of access to it on the property. So this is where the trail starts getting a little bit less uh, less obvious, but River knows the way through here. Now, River, remember there's some poison ivy in this area. Yeah, so we're going to want to just keep an eye out for that. Poison ivy is, you know, kind of the poster child for dangerous plants in the woods. Uh, oh, and here's some of it right here. Did you notice this, River? 
Here's some poison ivy right down in this area. These leaves here and these leaves over here are poison ivy leaves. Now there are other similar leaves that are not poison ivy through this area and I'll point some of those out because not everything with three leaves is poison ivy. In fact, raspberry plants have three leaves. A lot of times people will see raspberry plants when they're small and they don't have uh, well, raspberries or flowers on them and they'll think that they might be poison ivy and they're not. Alright, where do we go from here? Well, I think we go straight through here. One thing that I commonly do when I'm blazing a new trail is you oftentimes have a lot of this kind of stuff. Just branches hang low and every time I go, I kind of go through I'll break off especially with since everything's been kind of dry, I'll just, whoa, I hit the camera there, sorry. Uh, I'll break off a few of these. You know, I can come back and clean these up later. But uh, one, one way of blazing a trail is don't worry about doing it all at once. Every time you pass through, just, if there's something that's kind of poking you in the eye, like this right here, I'll just come and snap it. And next time we come, you hear that? Did you hear that? Chainsaw. You think that's a chainsaw? Okay, it's coming from this direction over here. Just keep our ears open. How quietly can we walk through the woods? Do you remember fox walking? Where you go heel to toe? You put your heel down softly and then roll onto the toes of your feet. That's a way of moving through the woods as quietly as you really can with all these uh, crumpling leaves. All right. It sounded like it came to, from the right, but you're, you're going this way because the trail's better this way? Okay. Well, this is a fresh fallen tree right here. Looks like that happened. How recently do you think? We get the clue of the fact that the leaves are still green on it. it hasn't died. Hmm? I'm not sure. Although there is some bark that's still connected, so it could be still feeding life to the tree even though it's cracked. All right, let's keep moving. Here's an example of something that someone might mistake for poison ivy right down here. And you can see we've got the three leaves, but it's a different leaf structure. And this is actually a tree. I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not awesome with trees, so I'm not gonna venture my guess on this. Uh, maybe you can post in the comments below what you think that this, uh, this, uh, this tree is, but uh, this is a type of tree and it is not poison ivy. So just because something has three leaves does not mean that it is poison ivy. Although that said, just because something's not poison ivy doesn't mean that it's safe. All right. You hear anything else? I see something up in the woods ahead. I see some color. You see the red? Oh, those balloons? Yeah, okay, you're right. That's mylar balloons that are just getting some sunlight on them. This is one of the resting places, permanent resting places of uh, your trash, America. When you let balloons go in a celebration of joy, they gotta land somewhere, and uh, you know, it's become someone else's problem to clean them up. Or, or some animal's problem to eat them. There's a truck up there. It's a truck and some kind of a structure. You hear that? Hey, I'm do doing a video. Yeah, so uh, it's my dad. My dad is uh, working on this 
old sugar shack which is on the property it's really old i'm not going to venture a guess as to how old it is but it's quite old and for insurance purposes uh we have to make it so that um, derelict vandals can't get inside and hurt themselves if they hurt themselves on the outside I, I guess that's not so much of a problem but if they go inside and they hurt themselves that's some kind of a liability issue and we have to <sighs> run a daycare center and protect them from themselves so uh, since my dad has helped me so much, I decided, uh, well, my initial reaction when my dad asked me if he could help me, uh, seal the place up was like, screw you. That's not my problem. But you know, he's helped me a little bit. So, uh, I figured, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, we were going to do it together, get the thing up and then hopefully he can come and start helping me back on the project over there again. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching and see you tonight at 8:30. Hopefully. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.